Head over to MiniatureMarket.com where they have thousands of board games at discounted prices like Canopy. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. You're about to see my Allegro one minute overview and final thoughts. This is designed to see if this game warrants more of your time. If it does, just keep watching because then you'll see my full intro overview and final thoughts. However, if you don't want to be spoiled anything and you want to skip right to the full review, use the time index below in YouTube. Canopy is a beautiful tableau building game with Vincent Dude Tray art where you're building trees and trying to get points for having the tallest tree and for completing them. Also, getting certain amounts of animals, but they also give you special abilities as well. The game is an interesting drafting mechanism where you're looking at a pile and either keeping it or going to the next one, but if you pass, you're adding cards for the other players. And you're gonna be set collecting different plants and you'll get different amount of points depending on how many plants you get of the different types. You'll be trying to match together sun and rain to get points. And of course you're trying to mate together animals for points, but also they have cool abilities. But you gotta watch out because there's fire and disease that can affect both you and other players, but it's not always bad because you might be getting rid of a card that you didn't want anyway. And at the end of the round you're scoring your trees, trying to have the tallest one, and you're gonna get points for that, better points as the rounds go on, but you're also gonna be trying to get the most completed trees at the end of the game as well for a big bonus. And there's plenty of in-depth advanced cards you can mix in to give the game more replayability and depth, and there's a three and four player and solo player variants. Canopy is absolutely gorgeous, has an amazing card selection system that Richard Garfield used before and I love it. The set collection for plants and tree bonuses is always really fun, fighting around people for the different trees. The fire cards, not always bad, I like that. Normally it's bad but it could actually help you. The seed cards, giving you hope for the end of the round and gives you different strategies so you think you might be able to get the card you really need at the end, changes your drafting strategy. Animal points and or abilities. Really cool, trying to keep them from other players. Some of the cards are randomly removed so you don't know which ones are in the game. The advanced cards gives you tons of flexibility and replayability. And the three to four player variants give you different strategies to think about depending on who has the cards in front of them. On the negative side, I don't like having two rule books to flip through. And it's a little hard to teach because you gotta teach all the cards up front because it's a lot of secret information. But this game is a fantastic quick tableau builder that got a saxophone serenade. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today we're going to be going through three different seasons in the beautiful rainforest. We're going to be building trees and attaching animals to them, watching out for fire and disease and getting some good plants around and some rain and sun. Today we're taking a look at Canopy. This is a beautiful tableau building game. Let me show you how it's played. I'll see you on the other side. In Canopy, you're trying to build a beautiful area that has trunks of trees and the canopy of the trees, sometimes bringing some animals in. You're going to be scoring points for your trees, like this one gets you two points, this one gets you two points for every one of these cards that's part of the bottom part of the tree, and you'll also be getting points for animals, like two for a toucan, five if you get two of them. Although some of the animals not only give you points, but the other cards give you special abilities as well. You're also trying to have the tallest trees because each of the three rounds or seasons, you're gonna be getting uh, points for having the tallest completed tree. Canopy lasts three rounds known as seasons. Now each season, the mechanisms are very simple. Has new groups one, two, and three. On your turn, you're gonna pick up all the cards in this pile. You're gonna look at them. If you don't want them, you're gonna place them down and add a card to it. Then if you, then you'll look at this one and you'll be like, huh, if you want them, you'll just take them and then you'll add a card here. If you don't want these, well, we'll add one here. We'll pick all these up and you might take all those because there's a lot of good ones there and you can add a card here. If not, you'll just take one off the top and put these back. So that's sort of thing that like you get to see what you're leaving behind for the other player, but it's a little bit of a pressure luck mechanism as well. So let's show you what all these cards do. You'll continue doing this back and forth, taking cards, looking at them, adding if you're not taking them, or take them all and put them in front of you. And you'll keep doing this until this deck ends, and you'll do that for all three seasons. That's pretty much how you play the game mechanically, so let's tell you what all these cards do and what you're trying to do. As you gain cards in your tableau, you're doing many different things. For one, you're building the trees. Now, you'll let's say you put this one here, it's going to be worth a point uh, once you end up scoring this one. If you end up getting another one, you simply just slide it under like this, and you are continuing to grow that tree. This is known as having two trunk cards, and you might end up finishing that tree off with a canopy. At the end of the round, these are going to score points here, and then this says like, two points for each of these cards. So this one's going to be two, four points, plus two more, plus one. Pretty cool. So you're trying to build trees. That's one of the main strategies in the game because at the end of each round, you're going to be getting points for whoever has the tallest tree, and it, it gets better. First round, it's three points. Second uh, is four, and the, and the third, sorry, is 
five. Now, once one scores for this, it is no longer available to be scored for the tallest, so it's gonna be sort of moving around a little bit. And when you do end up scoring a tree, you get one of these nice little things here just to remind you that you've already scored that tree, but they look really cool and beautiful. A lot of the game has to do with set collection, like the sun card. If you have a rain and a sun, you'll get five points, so by itself, it's worth nothing. The rain by itself is worth nothing. You get them both together, it's gonna to be worth five points at the end of the round. There's different types of plant cards. If I get one of these specific ones, it's zero points, two zero points. But if I get three or more of these Monstera, it'll be eight points. So you're trying to get a lot of these. Ferns, hey, you get two points for one, and then every other card you get zero. So it's like uh, two points for one, six points for three, 10 points for five or more. Uh, and then this one is two for one, seven for two, but minus three for three. So different types of set collection. There's a drought card that makes you get rid of a card, which most of the time sounds bad, but what if you actually had three of these, and you're like, oh darn it, I'm gonna get minus three points. Well, you get a drought card, see you later. Now I've got seven points. So sometimes the bad cards in this game aren't necessarily bad. Here's a couple more of quote unquote bad cards, fire. So if you have two of these, you're gonna have to get rid of two cards from your tableau at the end of the round. If you have three of them, you and everybody else is gonna have to get rid of one card. Now again, that's usually bad, but if you had three of these, your fire might be able to burn the plant that will end up giving you better points. So it's not always bad. And the disease works the same way, except instead of making your um, plant cards go away, it's your animal cards. Again, if you have two of them, you have to get rid of two animal cards. If you have three or more, every player has to get rid of one animal card. Speaking of those animals, there's plenty of different animals. There's only two cards of each in the deck. And again, two points if you get one of them, five points if you get both slots. So this one's worth two points by itself. This one is worth two points by itself, but it has an ability. Like, once per season, if you pass all piles, draw one extra card from the season deck. Um, but if you get both of them, then this one's going to be two. Uh, oh, sorry, this one's going to be uh, five if you get two of them like that. So if you make them together, you're going to get the five plus the two for seven. And here's a look at some of the other animals, like once per season, you may take one card from a pile that you pass, but it's worth a minus point. Once per season, you, you keep one extra card when you draw from the seed deck. So let's talk about the seeds. Each of these seed cards is going to allow you at the end of the round of the season to be able to go through a new deck called the seed deck. You're going to draw three cards and keep one, but for every fire card you have, you'll get to draw an additional one. Now that seed deck is this one right here that looks like seeds, and that deck has things like plants and canopies and trunks and rain and things like that. So you'll continue taking cards and such until the entire deck is gone. That's going to be end of the first season, then you're going to score. So each player is going to look at their trees. I'm going to score them. Again, it's going to get me one, two, and then two times each of these cards. So this one's get me four. This one's get me two. This one's get me one. Again, if it was, and once I score it, I put the little toucan there. And if it was at least tied for the tallest, all the people tied or the one that has the most is going to get that. Again, it's three points and then four points and then five points for the first, second, third round. Then we're going to score all the other things like, you know, these don't score till the end of the game, the animals, uh, but all the plants and the suns and the things like that will all score. But at the end of the round, everything goes away, gets discarded out of the game, except wildlife and trees. And these don't, again, don't score till the end of the game. Now you'll do that for two more seasons, continue to do the same things. And at the end of the game, whoever has the most completed trees is going to get the 10 point bonus. So it's a little bit of push and pull. Do I want to get a bunch of small trees or do I want to go for the ones that have me the tallest ones? Whoever has the most points at the end is the winner. Now, there's an advanced game you can play with events that change things, like at the end of the season, the player with the most different wildlife species gains three points. So a bunch of different cards that change up each round what you're focusing on. There's also new animals, and there's a lot of different ways you can play with these advanced rules. You can swap all of the old animals out with the new advanced animals, or you can mix and match, so you have six or seven wildlife pairs. Uh, but these have a little bit more going on with the abilities, but again, gives the game a lot more replayability as well. And there's also new plants and threats as well. And again, you can just mix in the plants and the threats only, or you can put the plants, threats, and wildlife in, all different ways to mix in, but to give the game even more replayability with some more complicated cards. And I should mention that there are a solo and a three to four player variant included. Three or four players, uh, there's piles between you and the other players. So your strategy as to when to take a pile or not changes. This game is absolutely gorgeous. It has that, it's Vincent Dutre art, and actually, this was a total random find for me. I was just at a local game store getting some games for some friends for, I think it was Mother's Day, I was getting some games for some, so, uh, uh, you know, a party. And I like just saw it on the shelf and I was like, hmm, I never heard of Canopy before. And I look at it and I look at the box and I turn around I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so gorgeous, tableau building. And I look it up, you know, and I see, wow, it's actually got a lot of really good ratings. I'll just get it, I don't often do that. Uh, but I did, I was pleasantly surprised with how good this game is that I hadn't heard about it before. Uh, so it is definitely gorgeous. It uses 
An amazingly simple but awesome card selection system. The first time I'd seen this, and the only time I'd seen it before this, was in a game called Spynet from Richard Garfield, where you take a pile, you look at it, you decide to keep it, and, uh, and, and you know, or not, and add a card to it, and you're leaving things for other players. I love that. A little bit of pressure luck. You're like, ooh, those three cards look better here, but this one I really need. You know, it's like, do you want door number three or the thing you want? It's like, let's make a deal. I love that mechanism. It works so, so, so well, and it does here. This, set, this game's a lot about set collection, which is always fun. I like that. You're select, set collecting for plants and tree bonuses. I like that the fire is not always bad as I showed you. A lot of times it can be bad, but sometimes you can use it to your advantage. I love that. Nature of the card is bad, but it could actually help you. That's pretty darn cool. Uh, I like that the seeds give you uh, hope for the end of the round. So it's maybe you're trying to really get that last plant card or get your seeds. You're like, hey, I might be able to get one there. Let's, you know, I'll, I'll, I can pass this pile, changes your strategy. Uh, I like with the animals, you're trying to get the ones that are just worth points, or there's the ones with the abilities, or even trying to mate them together. Uh, sometimes the, the other player has one of those animals and another one comes up and you're like, ah, this one's only worth two points to me, but it's going to be worth five if they get it. I got to take it. I can't let them have it. So you're doing a little bit of hate drafting there. Um, I like at the beginning of the game, some of the cards are randomly removed. So you don't know which ones are actually going to be in there. The game, that advanced game, the cards give you lots of flexibility of what to add. So do you want to add just the plants and the, the, the events? So do you want to add the animals? Do you want to add just the new animals? Do you want to mix them together? Lots of different replayability values there. Uh, the three to four player variant works fine. I think this game is still best with two. Uh, but with it's the interesting part is when you have piles that are in between the other players. Now, if I look at this pile and I don't want it, mm, I can look at what they have down there and go, you know what? I really don't need this because they're not going to want this. Where if this pile is over here, this player is dying for this card. I might have to take it even if I don't want it. And I like that it kind of changes the strategy there. So it works really well with three and four as well. Three is better. Four is a little long, a little more downtime. Uh, but I still think I like two the best. Um, on the negative side of things, I don't like it when games have two different rule books. I constantly find myself looking at one and flipping it over and look at the other one. They're only two pages, like front and back. But it was like trying to find the right thing for the right car when I need to find the right thing. And I didn't like flipping between like two different books. It was kind of a pain in the butt. Also, this game's a little harder. This style of game, generally speaking, is a little harder to get into for new players because you basically have to teach them what all of the cards do right up front before you start the game. Because they're going to be looking at cards secretly and they have to decide whether they want it or not. And they're not going to go, well, what does this do? Well, now I know what you're getting or now I know what you're leaving me. You know, stuff like that. So there's some intrigue to the game. So it's, it's a little bit harder on the front end. Uh, but those are minor quibbles. This game is fantastic. I love it. And for this reason, it's, um, it's going to be a staple quick two-player 30-minute game that's beautiful and fun to play. And uh, for all those reasons, it's getting inducted into my gaming library with a saxophone serenade. Let's hit it. Game Toppers not only transforms your existing table to a high quality gaming solution, they now offer full leg kits and dining cover solutions for the full table application. Paired with their amazing thematic premium stitch edge mats from noted board game artists like Vincent Dutre, collapsible cup holders, and really cool accessories, it's a complete system that upgrades every game you play. Go to GameToppersLLC.com or click the link below to late pledge for their latest Game Topper 3.5 Kickstarter campaign.